last week on the Lazy Scrapbooker Under Pressure. After deciding to go with color copies instead of actual newspapers instead of scans, it was four days full of computer problems for me that derailed my whole week. Instead of completing the 40 pages I needed last week, I only completed 23. Hi, I'm Donna Guest, the Lazy Scrapbooker and Creative Memories Advisor. Join me here as I plan, organize, and create a scrapbook celebrating my husband's 25-year career in the fire service. And I've got just two months to do it. Now let's see what happens this week in Episode 8, Scrapping Right Along. I'm going to say it, Week 8 was much better than Week 7. Well, that wasn't hard to be, but still. I started out this rainy day picking up my new shelving I ordered from Ikea. Then it was time to produce episode 7. While tonight's video is uploading and taking its own sweet time, I am going to spend some time putting together my new Ikea Calyx shelves to get my inventory more organized. Jeff's been asking me if I need new shelves for a couple of years now, and I was like, no, I'm good. I'm not good. But these boxes are hard to get into, so I had to find a pair of scissors, and of course I have these all over the place. Jeff has kindly come downstairs and offered to help me put these shelves together and also to test our marriage. We did an excellent job together, not like those outdoor Christmas lights. It's Saturday and I'm ready for an entire day of scrapbooking, which I really need because to stay on track, I need to get 28 pages done today. If I got more than that, even better. But before I get started, I have to clean up my personal cropping space because I can't be productive. Here, I'll show you. I wasn't kidding. This is, this is bad. I'm almost embarrassed to show it, but it, it's bad. This is what happens when you're working on a big project and you're just putting things everywhere and rushing, but this has got to be tidied up before I can move forward. On the other hand, I stayed up to almost three o'clock last night organizing my new three by four calyx shelf to go with the two by four I had and this is my inventory for sale and it is all organized because the state after I held a crop was just chaos every time and now I'm so happy to be organized. No that did not help me on this project but it does help me move forward and makes me feel really good about this room. Okay, it's Saturday. It's my big scrapbooking day. And as I mentioned in episode seven, my sister Lori is coming over to scrapbook also. So we're hopefully going to get a lot done today. And it occurred to me that I mention her a lot in my videos. I'm always say, saying something about my sister Lori said this or did that. So we are very close. She is at almost all of my events and she's very funny. And also she scrapbooks beautiful pages and always has great ideas. And the great thing is she's actually real and you get to meet her because she's here. <laughs> so our scrapbooking is underway. I am on page two. But if you're ever needing to use a photo that you don't have at the moment, I'm going to just do this. I have this note to myself, plus pic of J and three day old N. And I remember saying during the power layout, I'll know what that means. And I do. I know the exact picture. It is a landscape portrait that I'm going to put because he got a promotion and a baby within about the same week. And so I want to put a picture of him and Nathaniel right here and I know just the one. So I made this almost four by six photo about how I'll crop it and I'm going to just attach it with a little bit of repositionable tape runner down here to the bottom of my page and so that I can at least design the page around that and then have the picture printed and replace it. It's a good thing I saved some of these extra photos that we weren't going to use because I got to one page and I had two pictures and you know after seeing what I've been doing on this album there's not going to be a page with just two pictures. Um, also I had another picture that was about 15 years later that did not match at all. I think at some point when I was shuffling these pages around a, pa a photo got lost out of place. So I've held it aside. I know it's much later and then I just grabbed two extra filler pictures that I didn't use of equipment or you know vehicles and I'm going to put them in this extra space because I looked at what's coming next and I'm not going to rearrange a power layout for that. Okay, you know that I am not shy about showing you when I make errors because if it helps you fix an error that you made later, that's a good thing. So what I was doing here, I was pulling out these um, newspaper articles, the beautiful color copies I made that look so great. And I remember that I put a whole piece of paper in here, but it was to do a block layout because the newspaper is going to take up most of the space. And I want to fill in the spaces with this nice, dark, kind of leathery looking paper almost. And it's going to last me several pages of newspapers. Now, what did I do just being impulsive? I went ahead and put nine 
spots of regular tape runner on it to put it down and then I realized it's supposed to be block layout so you know what I don't want to leave that exposed because I'm going to stick it to everything and make an even bigger mess so here's what I'm going to do to save this paper and again no one except for you will ever know I'm just getting some scrap paper right here and I'm going to cover up those pieces of tape I mean because you know it's the regular tape runner it's not coming off if it was the repositionable I could do that with my fingertip and rub it off but yeah this is going nowhere so just cut out some little scraps here and I'm putting it down over the tape and there we go so I'll just do that in all nine spots then I can use this paper and cut it as I see fit without sticking it to everything on my table so just a tip, if you're ever going to be including these um, scans, or in my case, color copies of newspaper clippings, when I put it down on the bed of the scanner copier, of course, it's not going to be perfectly straight ever because it kind of moves as you put it down there. And so on my paper, it's crooked. So when I line it up the corner of my paper here, it's going to be cutting crooked. So make sure you use, I'm going to cut along, I'm going to look at this line right here, and then use the sight lines. There we are that are usually tucked away up here in the top of your trimmer, but that sight line is going to help me make sure I've got it straight. So I'm back here on the floor and I'm putting the finishing touches on the power layout for album number one. And as I've said so many times, it goes a lot quicker scrapbooking when I've got the papers already selected. So I'm making sure to do that. And I'll do the same thing for album number two as well. So Lori and I are having so much fun scrapbooking. I'm working on my project and she's working on her own album. And, but we're getting off on a lot of tangents like we always do. We were talking about the Oscars, which led to the fun performance of I'm Just Ken, which led to Ryan Gosling, which is now leading to... What, what's the first movie you ever saw him in? Remember the Titans. Oh, I first saw him in Murder by Numbers. He was really good in that. What was that movie he was in with Rosamund Pike? You know, from Gone Girl? It was really good. Let me see if I can find it. Um, oh, she was in an education. I didn't even remember that. She might be a bigger distraction than Nicholas. Fracture. That's it. Fracture. What a great movie. Okay, yeah, so this was a reenactment, and we wasted about 20 minutes doing it, but I promise it was an accurate depiction of what was happening. So sometimes my power layouts aren't the best plans because I found these two pages that were already somewhat designed as I was working on a video uh, several months ago, and I decided to use them. Then I realized that I have six photos on the left and seven photos on the right, so I think it's time we're going to put some peekaboo pockets to use here. Well, I just eliminated one picture because I have the same photo in here twice. This little pizza right here that I'm making for a page, I could not do it without these tools. First, the one hole punch. And those, I did several of them, those get captured right there. Then, the adhesive pen to put some glue down. Then, the lifter stick to pick it up. Honestly, I was doing these so quickly you couldn't put pepperoni on a real pizza this fast. Doing these pages with these old pictures, it's so fun to have these with Nathaniel in here from a visit to the fire department to take our Christmas card photos. He was only two and a half, and it's so adorable. I just told Lori that I want to go upstairs right now and pick him up, and she said, I want to see that because he's, of course, 18 and much bigger than me now, and already my back hurts because I strained it turning around in my chair to grab a punch. Okay, this has nothing to do with my album project, but I have to show this. This is Lori's custom album cover that she did for her album on the Van Gogh Immersive Experience. This is a photo that she took of his artwork, and then she put it on the cover of a custom album. And look, that is amazing, printed on book cloth. It's the prettiest one I've ever seen. I'm closing in on finishing this first album, and I come to this sticky note. Obviously, December 12th, 08 training on fairground street and if anyone can read that last bit just let me know <sighs> got it recruit class burn got it we had so much fun today lots of scrapbooking and talking and laughing and a fun dinner out and Lori had to leave around midnight of course but now it's 1 a.m i'm still at it and i just finished what i think is the last page for the first album so i'm pretty excited about that I still haven't met my goal for the week, but there's still time. It's 1 a.m. And do I get into the second album tonight or do I go to bed? I kind of want to open that power layout box and just see what I'm in for.
So I made the choice to dive into box number two. I skipped the first page because that always requires a little bit more thought, a little more than I can put into it at 1 a.m. So I dove into these two easy pages to start with. Now I have a letter over here from a preschool that was really nice that he did a tour for. And then this adorable card made by children from a scout group. So I've just put post-its over their pictures, of course. But I could have put the card in a pocket page like a 12 by 12 pocket page where it could be pulled out and looked at, but it was too big. It was longer than 12 inches. It was so adorable. So I have cut it a little bit and kind of uh, rearranged it. And what I did is I put the first page of it in an eight and a half by 11 pocket page. And it's going to go in the album just as a different size, which is kind of cool. You'll notice the staples line up with a 12 by 12 page. So it'll be able to be flipped over like this. And then you'll be able to see it look like this, the whole card as it was intended. And then something that hung off the top, I um, cut this and put it into two, I'll need to tack that down a bit, two little pieces right here. So it's really fun. It's so precious and it just had to go in here. It is now 2.15 in the morning. So I got to wrap this up, but how did I do today? Let's go to the tracker. At the end of week two tonight, I did my goal of 23 pages, which takes me to 80 completed, which was my goal for this point in time. So I am officially caught up. Okay, I'm at the halfway point, halfway through the album project and halfway through my time. So this is the beginning of week three. So I am caught up. I don't want to get behind. So after a long day of putting my tax information together for my tax repair, which is quite a long process for me, but it's done in a day. I am going to do some pages to make sure I keep on track. Oh, how fun. I'm getting to do the friendly firefighter presentations. And yeah, I'm using the one with the helmet on the floor and the patch on his shoulder that he scoffed at. And I'm also getting to use the um, the stickers and embellishments and things that I had bought years ago and then decided they were just too cutesy for this album, but they're totally appropriate for his presentations at schools. I'm about to finish page number 10 for the day. So I am now four pages ahead of schedule, which is a great feeling. I need to do that more often so I can keep on track because there are going to be days when I can't scrapbook. I know. So if you are interested in seeing how my table is set up, I'm going to show you. Um, this is not how it's always set up, but this is how I'm setting it up right now for this project to get done as quickly as possible. So I've just got my double 13 by 13 mat. I've got this taped together on the bottom with painter's tape. Then of course I've got my trimmer. I've got my page count right here for the day and then um, some little embellishments and punches that I've done. Then in the back I've got those words that I keep on my desk. They probably don't really have to be here. Then I've got all my pens organized. Then in front of that, I've got a stack of peekaboo pockets that, because I'm using those a lot. And then I've got my personal trimmer, which is getting a big workout. Then my border maker system, which is typically over here to the left, but I just used it. Then I've got three punches that I'm using most often, this arrow, the tab punch for the peekaboo pockets. And I have been using the campfire for training fires. I'm using that little flame there that's working out really cute. And then I've got my small flex pods over here that's got my tape runners in them, although they're typically right here on the table. And then I've got my silicone mat for um, using that when I need to do intricate items with the tape runner, scissors, all that good stuff. And then right here, I've got the ride on stickers that are serving me very well. And down here on the very messy floor, I've got my ABC one, two, three stickers and then two very messy um, pod inserts with the rainbow dots of my cardstock, which is in the simple power sleeves. I've left the table up where Lori was scrapbooking yesterday because for the next two weeks, it's going to make it a lot easier if I can pull out things from the power layout here and kind of prep them over here a little bit and get them ready to go. So that's just a very simple setup to keep things moving along quickly. And that's 10 pages completed today. I only needed to do six to stay on schedule, so I am ahead. And let's see how much I can get done tomorrow. Well, apparently nothing. I'm getting nothing done tomorrow. This is fast scrapbooking. I went into my stash and I pulled an old collection called Reflections, which is from the old company. And this is probably 15 years ago.
at least. And I thought these colors would look really nice, so I found these pre-cut strips that I had cut and put back in a folder, and I put them on, and it's too short. I don't know what I was thinking, but I didn't cut it perfectly the first time. So again, this is fast scrapbooking, so I found one of the complementing colors in there, and I just did this that I'm going to do. Um, I cut it with the deckle blade of my trimmer. And if you don't know what the deckle blade is, let me show you. It is the yellow one, the yellow one right here. And it gives it a nice little edge that looks like it's torn, kind of, but in a very orderly manner. All right, so that strip is there for no purpose whatsoever, other than to cover up my mistake that I made probably 15 years ago. But when I get these photos on here, and I don't know what order I'm going to put them in yet, it's going to look great. There we go. It turned out great. Our pages do not have to be complicated to look amazing. The focus here is on the photos and the papers behind it just complement the colors. My sister Lori always claims that journaling and titles just work out for me. She's not wrong. I did not pre-plan this, but to be honest, there's about a quarter inch too much on the right hand side, but it does not bother me. If it bothered me, I'd put an exclamation point, but that would be ridiculous. So I am leaving it and I'm pretty happy how that worked out. <laughs> this is what I get for bragging. That's supposed to stay. What a great way to spend our, our, not of. So that's what I get. But I'm going to use some of these write on stickers and cover that F up and then just keep going because this is just a little journaling box from the Showtime collection. Okay, no harm done. You can sort of see it if I zoom in, but this is bigger than actual size. So it's going to look great on the album. I needed to get eight pages done today to get caught up from yesterday's big fat zero, but I just don't have it in me. It's getting really late and I've got to get a good night's sleep. So I've got four days left to do 24 pages. Well, that's six pages a day, so I can handle that. I hope. I also have to get ready for my crop that's coming up on Sunday, March 24th. <laughs> You'll be shocked to know that I'm working on one of very few two-page spreads. Now, I know you all love your two-page spreads, and I love them too, but you will find in these albums, I have mostly single pages. So the facing pages might be very different from each other. And you'll, of course, see all of this in episode 11. So hopefully it will teach you to not be afraid of having two different pages facing each other. I kind of like it. I like the variety of it. You'll see. And then you can be the judge. Sometimes simple is best. When you have this much memorabilia on a page, there's so much going on. And I had to put the title up here and the dates down here. And I have three pieces of memorabilia and three photos. All I have in the background is a plain sheet of black shimmer paper. And honestly, that is enough for this page. There's a lot going on. The only time I got to scrapbook tonight was... Very, very late. It's 2 a.m. now, so I'm going to call it a night. Let's see how I did. I did eight pages this evening, which has taken me up to 104. And now I have made up, caught up for that big goose egg on March 18th. So I'm all caught up now. I feel like I am back on track and I've got the end in sight on this. So I can get this done. When I used my tracker, or when I redid the tracker after I missed the whole first week, I came up with the average of six pages per day, which seems very doable. But when you think about it, it's not always easy to scrapbook every day as much as we would love to. But, you know, life happens and there are things going on. So that six changes quite a bit with that. Sometimes it needs to be 10. Sometimes it needs to be 23. So that I found has been the biggest challenge on getting the project done. And while scrapbooking, and I've said it so many times during this series, the one thing that has slowed me down is that I didn't do the full power layout by including papers and embellishments and all of that. Mostly just papers. I'm not using a lot of embellishments, to be truthful. But that is the one thing that has really slowed down the scrapbooking part of it. So I've tried to take little chunks of the album at a time and lay it out and finish the power layout by adding the papers at that point. That has helped quite a bit. But it's just proof that a full, complete power layout is what it takes to get the most done at whatever event you attend. At this point, as I'm filming this right now, 
Jeff's first retirement party is in 12 days. What's well, in the morning? So it's in 11 and a half days. That kind of puts it into perspective. And I know I've got a ton more to do, but I know I can do it. I just need to devote Saturday to this, but I do have a crop coming up on Sunday. So I have got to get my act together and get ready for that. I started the week off thinking, oh, I don't really have to do anything. My crop's not until Sunday. Well, it snuck up here quickly. So now I've got a lot of work to do and I've got to still be able to scrapbook. This is a crop that's going to be really busy. I'm not going to be able to get any scrapbooking done at this when it's on a weekend. They're always busier. So I'm going to have to make every day count. There are only three episodes left in this series. Episodes 9 and 10 will show me finishing the album, I assume, and episode 11 is going to show a full flip through of the album so you get to see the final results. As always, thank you so much for watching and joining me on this big project. I appreciate all the well wishes and support. It has definitely kept me on track and accountable. No. <laughs>